Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel, you already know what time it is, it's time for another video and listen, it's not your traditional typical review for Luton versus Chelsea, the 3-2 win, the performance was a bit iffy but listen, that was to be expected with the statement dropping just moments before the match, listen, I'm not going to get into that too much, that's not what this video is about, I'll talk about that in more detail maybe tomorrow, maybe at the end of the video I'll gloss over um, some of my, my, my happy points on that game but listen, the headline hitter today is obviously Roman Abramovich selling Chelsea now he is ready and will sell in that statement that dropped and it's a sad day for Chelsea fans a lot of rival fans they won't get it of course they they think that it's always about just the money and oh you're gonna lose your sugar daddy and oh your your, your club's gonna collapse and liquidate and or maybe they just don't think we're going to have any issues and you guys are overreacting. Don't worry, you'll find someone else. It's not just about the money. It's about what the guy did during his time here, obviously, since taking over and buying the club from Ken Bates in the early 2000s. Listen, it's very difficult these days, almost impossible to find an owner that actually gives two shits about your football club. Not saying that it started like that when he when he bought us. Of course, he almost bought Tottenham. We were quite lucky. It, it wasn't, wasn't guaranteed to go this way. But since he's come here, he's, he's grown with the club, grown to love the club. And you can see that he really actually cares. You know, he was chasing down that Champions League trophy um, you know, like a hyena, you know, he would not give it up. He would not rest until he got that Champions League. He always prioritized success over um, you know, his pockets in terms of Chelsea and we owe him 1.5 billion and we're not even going to have to pay him back as well. You know, it was a loan that, that, that we took from him and, and he said he's going to just, you know, write off almost. And that's a big deal for us when we look for our new owner. You can tell he actually gives a shit. Um, and listen, he, he's not perfect. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to you like he's perfect. He really isn't. Do you know what I'm saying? Most billionaires is on. I'm not even going to say 100%, but I'm pretty sure 99% of them have got their hands dirty and done bad things, made stupid investments and whatnot in, in things they shouldn't. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend to, to sit here and lie to you and say that he's a perfect human being. But what he's done as Chelsea owner, he's been the best owner we could possibly possibly ask for. And there is a thing called sport sports washing. I understand all of that. Trust me. I really, really do. But like I said, for us he's been unbelievable and we as Chelsea fans, the grass will not be greener. In my opinion, I know I'm not here to provoke fear in you. I see a lot of ungrateful Chelsea fans talking about, oh, we'll be just fine. Listen, there's always a before and after post and pre-Roman. I'm not here to say that the club is, is, is nothing without him. Of course it's not. We move. But, but please don't make the assumption that the grass will be greener because there are many, many other owners that can come in here and do something completely different. You know, they can, they can be American investors potentially who just focus on the business side of things and the ones and zeros and they're just looking to make a profit and an investment or they can come with a group of investors as well that's that's a dangerous dangerous game to play you know we could also have a situation where listen we we have a small stadium you know and we are obviously we all love the stadium but that's a massive part to play for any new owner that comes in. They're going to want to look at that 42,000-ish seat or Stamford Bridge and say to themselves, listen, this is not this is not going to do. This is not going to do the job. Potentially, if we do leave stadium, a name change could happen. You know, we won't technically really call Stamford Bridge anymore, potentially, with the pitch owners and all the rights that, that come with that as well. So there's a lot going on, guys, that could change for us in, in the short-term, medium, and long-term future that I don't think a lot of people are pointing out. Um, and I don't... I, some people are happy to see him go, of course, because, you know, they, they, they he sacked Lampard or, you know, he, I don't know, he tried to move stadium because he wanted to bring up our revenue a little bit, which was very much necessary to keep this club moving in a great direction in terms of finances. But again, like I said, the grass may not be greener. You may come to rule that decision in 10 years, 15 years time if you don't like the owner that we get. So bear that in mind. You know, there's a lot of change, there's a lot of upheaval. Not saying it could all be negative, but it's, it's certainly not. I'm, I'm certainly not happy today. I'll put it that way. Um, but like I said, you know, the Chelsea Foundation, the NHS, you know, it's not it's not all bad. You know, the NHS, we, you know, during the pandemic, Chelsea did open up the doors in the hotel. The Chelsea Foundation, it works with the locals. It's not something the news will cover, but it's something we'll cover here. You know what I'm saying? It's something that the club have been taking steps over the last couple of decades in the right direction to put a better foot forward, you know, it's, it's not always, it's not always being clean. Um, but listen, it's, it's not just Roman that, you know, potentially could leave. I've spoken about it before. Marina, I've been working with him since 1997. It's a long working relationship, started as a PA outside of football with Roman. She could easily leave. Um, another woman that gets heavily criticised and people don't really appreciate her. Not saying she's perfect either. She definitely makes mistakes. Sometimes she haggles too much. Sometimes she asks for too much money. But, she did the sponsorship sponsorship deal for Nike. 
Again, not an easy deal to do. This 60 million a year. It's a lot of money. It's a big deal for Chelsea. Travago, all of these sponsorship deals that she's done, all these agents that she deals with, all of these sales for these, these big, big sales that she gets for, for Oscar, for Hazard. She's, if she goes, she's going to be missed. She's, she's fearless. She's one of the most powerful women in football. They, they say that for a reason. Tough negotiator. It's annoying for fans, 100%. Do we need to look at, you know, having some more stability, 100%. But she's done a lot right. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and if she goes, that's another massive, massive part of our hierarchy gone. Hierarchy gone. Um, and you know, something that we're gonna have to we're gonna have to replace. And listen, like I said, it's not all bad. Potentially, if we get this right, if we get this right, maybe the funding does come down. I'm not expecting somebody to invest the amounts of money Roman has invested. The lights just switched off. Okay. Yeah. This guy just can't charge anything fully, can he? No. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, we're going to get someone that invests as highly as, as Roman does. It's very unlikely that we're going to get someone that invests the sums of money that he invested. But maybe this leads to more long-term stability, less sacking managers. Maybe this leads to a better top-to-bottom philosophy and structure from scouting all the way up to, you know, director of football. Maybe this leads to that. Who knows? Hopefully, it does. From the statement, it, it tells me that he cares. It tells me that, Hopefully, whoever he sells it to, of course, money is going to be the primary, um, you know, point of the sell. You're looking for the highest bidder. I'm sure there'll be a bidding war. Don't expect this to get done so quickly. Yes, you're seeing rumors of a Swiss 86-year-old. You're seeing rumors of American investors. There could be silent investors as well. Don't just assume that it's going to get done in the next couple of days. This could easily take a month, um, although there is the pressure from the government. So maybe a little bit of a medium ground will have to come from there. But listen, like I said, you know... Uh, it's going to be an interesting situation to follow. I don't know who's going to get the club, who's going to buy the club, but whoever gets it, whoever buys it, they've got a fantastic youth system as well that we've built to work with. Fantastic youth system. For me, the best youth system currently in the world. People are going to sneer and snigger, but that's another thing that he's built. Do you know what I'm saying? There's another very important thing is La Cobham. La Cobham. And for, for the rivals that will say, listen, you're, you're about to lose all the money. Well, Chelsea have been pretty self-sustainable for the last few years. We have been spending what we make transfers wise. We sell players and then we buy players with the money that we make. So Chelsea have been challenging around that third, fourth position anyway in the last four or five years. Um, on top of that, you know, we were fourth, round about third, fifth when Roman came in as well. So we're not really moving the goalposts too much in terms of where we were and where we are today. So it's not like as if Chelsea are coming off this Manchester City level of Premier League dominance, just trying to sweeten this guy up a little bit so he stops smirking in the background, and now we're falling to a top four battle. That's just not that's not the case. We're kind of around about where we were when, when he took over in terms of league position, and I don't really see us falling unless someone absolutely makes an absolute mashup of this situation someone who would have to go very very wrong to drag us further down but we do need to get things right we 100% do um I mean I'll ask you for a rival's perspective shortly just for a second how are you how are you looking at this sir my major contention and who I really feel sorry for and the number one victim in all of this in my opinion is Thomas Tuchel for the simple fact that this man has worked minor miracles was promised Everything, all the treasure in the sea, in the ocean, in the air, in the sky, in the summer. And now the man that was about to give him more, 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 more little pieces, more gems to play with than ever before is now unknown. It's not, it's not certain that the person that comes in believes in Thomas Tuchel. It's not, um, job security could be a little bit question iffy. Also, the power structure that Tuchel has come to work with him now could potentially be at jeopardy for the simple fact that he doesn't know what the new management is going to require from him going forward. That could be an issue. 100%. And that's why I'm so agitated, so nervous, so on edge because my favourite manager is... is He's having to deal with a lot right now and we don't know what's going to happen. People talk about transfers. <laughs> People were up in arms when I said, I don't think we're going to win the league next year. I think it's a two-year minimum transfer window, two summers that we need to fix our squad. Well, listen, that all just gets pushed back to even more with this situation because, like I said, it's going to take a while to sort out and when it does, we have no idea what the intentions are of the new owner. Hopefully, like I said, we sell to the right person and they are just as ambitious as Roman was. But I want to close up this video by just saying thank you. Do you know what I'm saying? We have to thank him. 19 years of success 
I'm I'm grateful. I hope Chelsea fans are as well. It's the most successful period of our of our of our history. We've won every single trophy. He's been relentless. Like I said, he's taken a hit financially with us, but he's being ruthless. He sacked managers. And listen, that's not the way to go anymore. So, like I said, there could be some positives. It's not the way to go sacking managers anymore. You won't get instant Premier League success. But we we did well in that era. Do you know what I'm saying? We we cleaned up. We 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 took the most trophies home in that in that stint. And now I can only hope that you know his time is looked upon at Chelsea as it should be, as a legend. Do you know what I'm saying? The best owner that you could possibly ask for um, for a football club. And for me, like I said. Um, I hope he gets to say farewell at some point and it's, it's been it's been real man it's been it's been a serious serious journey it's a shame it's ending this abruptly and I just hope that listen I know he didn't make every single decision that a lot of you guys liked but I hope you just look back on his time and you really deep all of the success and you you appreciate it because it doesn't have to go this way you only have to look at the other football clubs can Manchester I, United and Arsenal this deal I, people really think they're going to wake up tomorrow morning and Chelsea's going to find a new owner. That's not how deals work. This will take time. Please tell them that again because I feel people think you're going to have a new owner in two days' time. No. Yeah. Guys, that's not how it works, you know? Like, this is a multi-billion, multi-billion pound deal. There's going to be negotiations. There's going to be, there's going to be bidding wars and it's going to take time. No, the Prem has to um, do that fair and safety protocol with a new owner, remember? All of that, that takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So so please do be patient. Um don't don't <sighs> it's not transfer news, okay? It's <laughs> this is not Dembele or, or Felix. Please don't, you know, be manipulated into every single rumour you see. Some own some people that are interested in buying the club, it will be kept hush hush under the wraps. It won't just be coming out on Twitter in quotes, it won't be coming out in, in, in news articles. And I think Roman is usually quite a private guy. So I'm sure he'd like to conduct his business privately um, for the most part and get this deal done um, silently. It's a billion, like I said, billion, multi-billion pound deal. Okay, I just need to make that very clear. This is not FIFA Omen team. This is not transfers. This is not Jules Kunde. This is not the Kai Havertz saga. This is a multi-billion pound deal. That's what I want to end on. So like I said, thank you to Roman. I am grateful. I hope most of you are. I hope can't speak for everyone, but I hope the Chelsea fan base on a whole is grateful. Um, and like I said, we feel for Thomas Tuchel and just be prepared for a lot of change, a lot of upheaval from the hierarchy. Um, and yes, yeah, the end of an era, people, but we have won it all. Big up your damn selves. Make sure you smash up all of the icons. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will obviously be addressing this on All You Can Eat Chelsea tomorrow and we'll be going through the different candidates that have made themselves public. But like I said, there are those silent those silent ones that will also come to the table in the coming days. In a bit, people. Peace.